Hello there. Welcome to my show, COVID-19 Update by Hira. Yeah, today is August 4th, 2020, and I'm done. I'm finished at Georgetown University. Today was my last clinical, and I don't have anything more to do because I've finished. I've done all my requirements, and I'm looking forward to starting work at a Virginia Hospital Center. Uh, yeah, so I'm, uh, basically, I'm all done. So I'm really excited. So <laughs> I want to say uh, congratulations to me for finishing everything. Yay! So I'm very excited, yeah. Um, as you know, uh, I'm an independent candidate for U.S. Congress in Virginia's 8th District, Arlington, Alexandria, Falls Church of Jefferson County. And uh, I'm happy to uh, share that uh, all my hard work advocating for the health and lives of you guys in Virginia's 8th District has paid off. And I have saved thousands of lives. Yes, because Arlington County Public Schools, Alexandria City Public Schools, Fairfax City Public Schools, and Falls Church City Public Schools have all decided to go online, remote learning, 100%, no classroom instruction. Yay! All my fighting for you has paid off. I fight for you, so I save your life. So you fight for me. Give me the election victory. <laughs> kind of rhymes, doesn't it? Yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I get things done, you know? Fairfax County Public Schools was going to open like three days a week. You know, I'm opening five days, opening three days. What's the difference, right? You're going to get infected, you're going to get infected. So as soon as um, Fairfax County Public School Superintendent announced that he wanted to go three days a week, you know, with like just like, uh, you know, spreading students out in the classroom, I said, no, no, no can do, no can do. Um, so, you know, as soon as uh, he announced that on, uh, I guess that it was uh, Face the Nation show, a as you see from my Twitter account, I tweeted and tweeted to say, uh, uh, Falls Church, a Fairfax County Public School to shut down. Uh, so, originally all four public school districts, that's the state owns uh, public schools, for those of you who are not in the United States, because in England, public schools refers to privately owned schools. Um, the government schools, using British lingo. Um, but in America, we call it public schools. Uh, schools that are paid for by the government uh, and free education. Uh, so yeah, so the four major uh, public school districts in uh, Virginia uh, was going to open uh, with social distancing. But, you know, here at Christian King, that's why I am independent candidate for U.S. Congress and Virginia's 8th District. I want to save your life, save the lives of your children. So I have tweeted and tweeted and tweeted. I've advocated for you. I spoke on this show, COVID-19 update. Uh, they tried to get um, all four public school districts in Virginia's 8th District uh, to, to not have on-campus classes. So I want to save your life. Yeah, so if you have like a daughter in after school program, what could happen is your, your daughter could die, right? I mean, school programs, after school programs, these are kind of dangerous, you know, uh, in COVID-19 era. I, mean, I had to tell you, you know, uh, if these were normal times, yeah, daycare centers, school, that's a great thing. But these are not normal times. You know, if you're at, keep, keep picking up uh, your daughter from after school programs, you, you may be picking up a daughter who's infected with COVID-19 who may die from it. Or you may be picking up a daughter who may give you COVID-19, right? So um, that's why I've been petitioning and arguing and pushing and encouraging and cajoling, advocating for all of you in Virginia's 8th District uh, to... Uh, close down the schools. And obviously, I'm the kind of man who gets things done. So you should not be surprised that Virginia's 8th District are all going 100% online. Thanks to Hirak Christian Kim, independent candidate for U.S. Congress of Virginia's 8th District. Yes, 
you see a leader, national leader, an effective national leader who is working to save your life from COVID-19. Can you imagine what I can do in U.S. Congress? Yeah, that's why you should vote for me. I get things done. Have you heard Don Beyer, my opponent in Virginia's 8th District, say anything about anything? He's like just napping away, you know, in this little lair. But here I question came, independent candidate for U.S. Congress in Virginia's 8th District. That's who I am. I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting to save your life. I'm fighting to save your children's lives. I get things done. I got all these four school districts, the, all the major school districts in Virginia's 8th District to close school down. Just have 100% remote learning, online learning, so you don't, your children don't have to go to school. See what Hira Christian Kim, independent candidate for U.S. Congress, can do for you? That's why you should vote for me. I get things done. Um, there's a reason why I'm the vice president. Well, my term ended in May, but uh, it went from May to May, May 2019 to May 2020. There's a reason why I was voted in as the vice president of graduate student government at Georgetown University. I get things done. And as you know, I was the president, I am the president of a Georgetown Collaborative Diplomacy Initiative. Uh, and you know, when I graduate, my term is over, but um, yeah. So uh, that's a school of foreign service uh, group that is dedicated to diplomacy the biggest one of its kind at Georgetown. I'm the first non-school of foreign service student to be the president of a school of foreign service group. Uh, I get things done, and that's why I uh, am, am uh, put into position of sub leadership. So I get things done. See, uh, so you're very blessed that uh, I, here at Christian Kim, independent candidate for US Congress, am running to represent your your uh, area, Virginia's 8th District, which is Arlington, Alexandria, Falls Church, and parts of Fairfax County. I get things done, I save your life, I save your children's life. You know how many days I've tweeted, tweeted to close the schools down in this area? I've, I've been tweeting since May, May, June, July, three months. I've been tweeting three months to close down Virginia's 8th District schools, Arlington Public Schools, Alexandria City Public Schools, uh, Falls Church Public Schools, and Fairfax County Public Schools. Three months I've been tweeting, advocating for you and your children to save your lives. And obviously, you know, I'm a national leader. My voice counts, you know, and the superintendents of uh, Alexandria, Arlington, Falls Church, and Fairfax City County and the Public Schools have heeded my call and have, have uh, you know, uh, um, submitted proposal to, uh, to go 100% online, right? Not all the school districts have done this in Virginia because they don't have Hira Christian Kim in their district advocating for them, right? Right, now Falls Church and Fairfax County and, and Arlington and Alexander City Public Schools, they're all going to open with social distancing. If it weren't for Hira Christian Kim, independent candidate for U.S. Congress of Virginia's 8th District, that's what they probably would have done. Many Virginia school districts are opening up with social distancing. Like in Georgia and Indiana, you know, one Georgia school district had 240 cases COVID-19 after they opened up, you know, in their first week, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean, you see what I'm, hel I'm helping to do in Virginia's 8th district? I'm helping to save your life. That's what happens when you have a good leader in your Virginia State District, in any district, in any area, he makes a difference. And that's me, Hira Krishan Kim, independent candidate for US Congress of Virginia State District. I have made a difference in your life. I have saved your children's lives. You will see as we hit flu season and school districts that opened up will have thousands of students dying. You'll be like, thank you, Hira, for, for advocating for us for three months, tweeting and and speaking on the COVID-19 update by Iraq show, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, fighting for you and your family members and your children, you'll be like, thank you, Hirak, you fought for us when Don Bayer did not. So uh, that's why you should vote for me against Don Bayer uh, in Virginia's 8th District for U.S. Congress of, on November 3rd, 2020. Because I'm that much better than Don Bayer representing you and your interests 
saving your lives. I mean, I, I like Don Byron, he's a nice guy, but I believe I can do a much better job. And you can see that, right? Because I am fighting for you, I'm providing information you need, uh, and I'm getting things done, right? I mean, Arlington Public Schools could have said, we're not gonna close. We're gonna just do social distancing. But they're closing, why? Right? Because here our Christian Kim spoke up and said, you need to close. And here our Christian Kim spoke up and said, uh, you know, Alexandria City Public School needs to close. So Alexandria City uh, Public School is closing, you know, classes. You know, Fairfax County Public Schools is closing classes. Falls Church City Public Schools are closing classes. Can you imagine what I can do in U.S. Congress for you? Yeah, I can solve our nation's problems at the national level. That's what you need. So, uh, you know, do nothing done by or got nothing done, right? But here at Christian Kim, you know, even before he's elected, he's getting things done left and right. I got Georgetown University to close down. Georgetown University uh, was gonna open the campus and invite first year students to campus. But here at Christian Kim, I tweeted, I advocated, I spoke on this show, and I, I advocated for you to close down Georgetown's university, so it's closing down. Unfortunately, Catholic University is opening they're continuing with the plan to bring first year students onto campus like Georgetown was originally planning when Tahira Christian Kim got involved and got into your face, you know, of Georgetown University to make sure they shut down. Because I don't want people to die, right? Especially Georgetown. I know a lot of people at Georgetown. And first year students who are going to come on, I mean, I'm sure they're going to be nice people, and I don't want them to die. Uh, and so I, I advocated for you. I get things done. I get things done here at my school. I mean, it's in Washington, D.C., it's not Virginia's 8th District, but I get things done in my school, Georgetown University. You know, as you know, I'm graduating uh, in August from Georgetown University, um, master's program in clinical nurse leader at the School of Nursing and Health Studies. Uh, there are 25 of us uh, who were pinned in May 2020. And so I get things done, you know? I get, that's why I'm the leader. That's why people look to me uh, for leadership. Pin, 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 we're pin. Georgetown CNL 2020, we were pin, 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 pin. Yay. So, um, yes, I'm going to be rocking this state. I'm going to be rocking this country to get things done. You are looking at the national leader who are getting things done in his vision. So, obviously, one of the things that you uh, you have to look for is visionary leaders who get buy-in from followers, right? You're following me because you have bought into my vision, right? You have bought into my goals. And I, I understand that because I make a lot of sense to you. When you watch me in this show, read the things that I published in my books, in my books that you may purchase through amazon.com, when you read my tweets, it makes sense to you. You out there, whether you're Democrat, Republican, or independent, or any other political party or political affiliation, you're reading my stuff and saying to yourself, he makes sense. Kira Christian Kim makes sense, right? And that's why you are buying in to my vision, you are buying into my mission, and you are buying into my goals. And as you know, I make three campaign promises to you. Campaign promise number one, the very first thing I will do when I'm elected to U.S. Congress in Virginia's 8th District is go there and have a bipartisan bill to illegalize homosexuality in America. So LGBTQ plus will be illegalized. We're going to use the federal agencies, Homeland Security, FBI, uh, U.S. Marshals, uh, National Security, Security Administration, uh, ICE, um, and local state police agencies, county police to arrest every LGBTQ member and then arrest them. And then we're going to process them through the U.S. court system. And the court system will have mandatory death penalty for everyone who is LGBTQ. So that is my first campaign promise that I will. I will do due diligence to get this done. Because as we know, we, from a spiritual perspective, we are suffering COVID-19 
because of homosexuality. God promised in Romans chapter 1 that the wrath of God will visit America for homosexuality. And God is keeping his promise to America. This is from a spiritual angle. There's a reason why for 2,000 years, the Catholic Church has killed homosexuals as a matter of justice. That is social justice according to Christianity. And that is because they're following the social justice principles of the Christian Bible. That is a right thing to do because God exists and God has given us book of Deuteronomy. God has killed everybody in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah for homosexuality. And God has continued the Old Testament tradition of anti-homosexuality in the New Testament. And Romans chapter 1 clearly says, if you maintain homosexuality, you're going to die. You know, God's wrath will visit you. Uh, and so God's fulfilling his promise in the United States of America through COVID-19. Millions of Americans will die. I propose that you illegalize homosexuality, LGBTQ, as soon as possible to avoid the wrath of God. Because my prediction is by end of year 2022, over 30 million Americans will die from COVID-19. There's going to be no cure. There's going to be no vaccine. You'll see what I mean. Because God created COVID-19, right? I mean, people create stuff, but ultimately it's God who has created, right? Um, and God's not going to stop until you submit to his law. God enforces law through uh, his holy angels that you cannot see. He's not going to stop until you legalize homosexuality. Read the Bible and see how God acts. Do you remember the 10 plagues of Egypt? God sent 10 plagues of Egypt uh, to Egyptians until Egyptians let Israelites go. That's who God is. God loves to send punishment, destruction, wrath, and send his angel of death to kill people uh, until you comply with his law. That's who God is. That's what the Bible shows. Read book of Revelations. You know how many people God kills in the book of Revelation, the prophecy that's going to come true in our time, uh, you know, in the world, in New Testament age, before Jesus comes back, either in the present or in the future? God promises to kill one-third of the world's population. If COVID-19 is fulfillment of the book of Revelations, one-third of the world will die from COVID-19. We don't know yet whether it is going to be the fulfillment promised in Revelation, which kills one-third of the world's population or not. We just don't know yet. It will become more clear about five years from now. You know, when we're thinking like, oh, one billion people dead, then you could say, well, it may be that one-third promise in Book of Revelation. Obviously, uh, the Black Plague killed one-third of the world's population, but it was a false alarm. People who were living during Black Plague thought Jesus was, Christ was going to come back because one-third of the world, people, world population were killed, fulfilling Revelation prophecy. But it was like, psych. You know, God has a sense of humor. So uh, just because one-third of the world's population dies, from COVID-19, if that happens, that doesn't mean that um, Jesus Christ will definitely come back. Because God could say, psych, you know, again, because God loves to kill people. Uh, just read the Bible. God, one thing that God loves doing is killing people in divine punishment. Read that in book of Isaiah, book of Jeremiah. It's uh, throughout the Bible, God kills people. God killed people in Sodom and Gomorrah for homosexuality. Um, and I'm calling on all Christians to boycott Ellen DeGeneres' show because she's lesbian and she attacks Christianity. We need to boycott her show. If you don't boycott your show, you'll probably get COVID and die. Yeah, if you're a Christian, because God's going to have send the wrath of God upon your family for endorsing homosexuality uh, or endorsing those homosexuals on TV and media who attack Christianity. Because Ellen DeGeneres openly attacks Christian pastors who condemn homosexuality. So you watch her show, you're supporting her. So stop watching Ellen DeGeneres. But if you watch it, don't be surprised if you get COVID and die. I'm talking to you born of again Christians because the wrath of God will treat you specially because you are endorsing her show against Romans chapter one. You are in violation of God's law. Serious violation of God's law just for watching Ellen DeGeneres. And you will experience the wrath of God. So don't blame God if some tragedy happens. 
your children get COVID and die. So why did you watch Ellen DeGeneres show? I hear a Christian came independent candidate for U.S. Congress said you must boycott Ellen DeGeneres show because it's in violation of Romans chapter one, where God promises the wrath of God. If you're going to go ahead and do it, that's your freedom. You, you are free to do what you want, but don't be shocked when God practices his freedom and punishes your family through angels of death that he sends, invisible. For angels of death killing believers, like Christians, you know, believers, just read Old Testament, New Testament. It happens all the time. God loves to kill people in divine wrath and punishment. So if you're an evangelical Christian practicing Catholic, watching Ellen DeGeneres, he, 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 you know, yeah. You, you, your joy and happiness may be sure live because Jesus is pissed at you. Yes, Jesus is pissed at you because he gave you Romans chapter one. You're just defying it. Wrath of God will visit your family. And you know, angel of death may come a knocking. Angels of death may come a knocking. Angels of death may come a knocking. Angels of death may come a knocking. Yes. Next time you hear that angel of death knocking at your door, you know why. And as you bury your dead child, just remember you should not have watched the Ellen DeGeneres show. You chose to watch it in violation of God's law. Angels of death came a knocking. Whose fault is that? Whose fault? It's your fault. Yes, you comply with God's law, you will live. You do not comply with God's law, God's going to enforce his law against your family, against you and your children. Sins of the fathers shall visit their children to the fourth generations. So even if your children are completely innocent, you violating Romans chapter 1 will result in your children's death. That's the biblical principle. That is the social justice of God. So do not support LGBTQ for any reason unless you want to invite. Angels of death of Jesus Christ come a knocking. Yes, angels of death of Jesus Christ as seen in the Holy Bible will come a knocking. Yes, God is very serious about Romans chapter 1. Those who of you violate Romans chapter 1, you're going to get a visit from angels of death of Jesus Christ. Look at the activities of angels of death of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament and New Testament. They love what their job. Their primary job is to kill believers, but you know, they kill non-believers too, if God orders them. But yeah, I mean, that's their primary job. Their whole purpose for existence, the angels of death, is to kill. That's what they do their job. That's their primary job. Just read the Bible about angels of death. I'm not making this thing up. It's all in the Bible. You know, God gave us things in the Bible for us so that we don't have to a knocking from angels of death who wants to do his job, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. You know how many people are dying in America? Wake up, wake up. You need to follow Romans chapter one where angels of death of Jesus Christ will come a knocking to your family. So wake up. So, um, God is good, you know. <laughs> you know, I love Jesus, you know, because, you know, it's, it's anything is a double, it's, you know, double-sided coin, right? If you accept God's law and you keep God's law, you're blessed, right? You don't have to fear the angels of death because there's no reason why angels of death will come knocking because you've kept Romans chapter one. It's only when you violate Romans chapter one that you need to fear Angels of the Lord, angels of death, come or knock, right? You don't need to fear angels of death if you didn't violate it, Romans chapter 1. If you did not fight for LGBTQ rights, you have nothing to fear. But if you fight for LGBTQ rights, you should fear 
because Romans chapter 1 promises to send wrath of God. You want to go, go to hell earlier? Because <laughs> you're not going to heaven. It doesn't matter if you're baptized, you take communion every, every Sunday. Uh, it doesn't matter if you pray, read the Bible every Sunday, every day, every, every second of the day. If you support LGBTQ, you're going to hell. It doesn't matter if you're Franklin Graham, Joe Osteen, uh, John MacArthur, if you support LGBTQ rights in any shape or form, you're going to eternal damnation or now. So it just matter. The question is whether you get there earlier or later. But you're not going to heaven supporting LGBTQ rights. Because that's fundamentally against uh, not only God's law, but God's identity as creator. Because in Genesis, it says God created them male and female. And Adam and Eve were married by God himself. You violate the fundamental law of God that's been in place from the creation until now, then you should expect a nod from angels of death of Jesus Christ who are going to enforce God's law. It's no accident thousands of Americans are dying, probably those people who've been supporting LGBTQ rights. So, you know, I mean, do what you want. It's your, your life, you're free, you're not a slave, do what you want. But God has promised to send the wrath of God to you and to your family if you violate Romans chapter one. That's a fact. You know, earth is round, whether you think that or not. There is oxygen in the air, even if you don't think so. Romans chapter one will be enforced by God's heavenly angels of death whether you think they exist or not, that's irrelevant. Fact is a fact. And so uh, obviously biblical fact is reality. Um, you could deny the reality, but reality is either angels of death exist or they don't exist. I'm saying they exist. And I'm saying that's a fact. Well, let's see. I mean, you know, when you die, you know, you have all your answers answered, right? When you die and you go to hell, you know what I said was real. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, there's no joke there. Um, as you know, uh, I'm a student at Georgetown University, which is a Catholic university. So Catholic University, Georgetown University believes in everything that I'm stating. They believe that homosexuality is evil, that it's condemned by God, that no homosexual goes to heaven. That's an official position of the Roman Catholic Church. That's the official position of, of Georgetown University. That's the official position of all the Jesuits official biblical position um, for 2,000 years, and that's never going to change. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'm just telling you like it is, you know, because truth will set you free. Now, um, second campaign promise I made, if you vote me in uh, as a U.S. congressman, I will work with bipartisan uh, unity to illegalize abortion. And we're going to prosecute women who have abortion as first degree murderers. So we're going to make that into law. Because obviously if abortion is murder, women who have abortion are murderers, right? Logically, you can't say abortion is murder, but the women who have abortion are not murderers. That doesn't make logical sense. So we're going to be logically coherent. And when we legalize homosexuality, we're also going to to make sure that people who commit this murder of infants are sent to prison to the electric chair. You know, so that's something that we're gonna uh, work toward. And I promise to do uh, due diligence to make sure that happens. Uh, so I hope you'll vote for me. Uh, you know, if you agree with this vision for America that I have to bring America back to God, because obviously something seriously wrong with America, right? That's why all this is happening. If everything is running smoothly, and there's nothing wrong, then this should not be happening. So you would agree with me there's something seriously wrong. Do you think everything is normal? Is that what you think? Is that why you're at home right now? Is that why your children are at home? Is that why you can't even eat at a restaurant, your favorite restaurant nearby your home? You know how many favorite restaurants I have in this area? I can't eat there because of COVID-19. And you're telling me that everything is normal? Is that what you're saying? Everything is normal. Do you want to stick by that answer? No, everything is not normal and things are getting worse. 
We have over 1,000 deaths every day in the United States. This is not normal. This is summertime. This is not even winter season. This is not flu season. And we have over 1,000 people dying right now. And soon we'll get over 2,000 people dying per day in summer. I'm still sticking by my statement that by end of August, there will be 1 million people dead. Because I think that could happen. I hope that won't happen. I'll be happy if, you know, that doesn't happen. But I think we still can happen. So I'm still sticking by that. But what's going to be worse is during flu season. During flu season, people are going to drop like flies. Because it's flu season. This is summer. This is like when nobody should be dying from anything, really. It's summertime. But we have over 1,000 people dying. Yes, this is the wrath of God promised in Romans chapter 1 being fulfilled in the United States of America in all 50 states. Because all 50 states have not submitted to Romans chapter 1. So the sooner we legalize homosexuality in accordance to Romans chapter 1, better it is for all of us. And obviously, you vote for me, I'll go to Congress and get that done for you so that you don't have to continue to experience the wrath of God. Because as World Health Organization said, COVID-19 can be forever. Like HIV viruses, it's been there forever. You know, since, since we discovered that it hasn't gone away, hepatitis C virus, since we discovered that, we don't know how long it existed, but since we discovered it, it's, it's, it hasn't gone away. And COVID-19 can be that way as, as well. Is that the situation you want to live in? This can be forever. Forever. You know, God's a, you know, God lives outside of time. For him, it's like a thousand years is like one day. Bible said it actually, literally. You know, a thousand days is like one day to God. This could happen for a thousand years. Because God is outside of time. You're inside of time. I'm inside of time. God is outside of time. He sees time, past, present, and future all at the same time. That's, that's who God is. We, we are confined to the linear time period. God is not. So God knows what's exactly going to happen a thousand years from now. So, um, yeah, get with the program. Comply with God's law. Romans chapter 1. God is serious about it, as you can see. Uh, if you don't comply, well, don't comply and see what happens. You know, I... I I dare you to not comply and see what happens. <laughs> you know, I mean, God has no problem, you know, sending his angels of death. Yeah, so do what you want, you know. I mean, you know, I thank God that our schools close in Virginia's 8th district because that's going to reduce the death by significant number, you know. Um. Because I, I was afraid like thousands of children would die in Virginia's 8th District because schools were originally planned to open. But now, you know, you know um, we're going to far less. I mean, we, we may still have like over 1,000 children die because if parents are working outside, they could bring in COVID to their children, right? Um, so it, it could still happen that a few hundred or even 1,000 children die. But it's not going to be like thousands and thousands of children like how it was gonna be if the school's open, right? Um, as as uh, you know, I've been um, encouraging other companies to transition jobs to online or at home jobs to protect your life. Uh, some of the companies are listening to me uh, and that's good. Some of the companies are still stubborn, they're not listening. But I'll continue to advocate for you because I wanna save your life. Um, so, you know, I'll keep fighting for you. I fought for you for three months to close the um, Virginia's 8th District. Do you know anyone else who's been fighting for you for, for three months every day? That's the kind of person I am. That's why I'm running for you as Congress in Virginia's 8th District to fight for you. I fight for you and I won for you. My victory is your victory. Because your children will be saved. You will be saved from COVID death. Right? So my victory is your victory. That's why you need to vote for me when I win. My election victory is your election victory. You need me in Congress in this COVID-19 era. What do you think is going to happen? This is not going to go away. You know that, right? 
COVID-19 is not going away. You know that, right? It's not going to disappear. You're not going to have a cure. Most likely, none of the vaccines will work fully. You know that, right? And you don't think you need Hirak Christian Kim in Congress fighting for you, fighting for a moral America to bring America back to God so that we again enter in the grace of God? Do you want to be in the grace of God or not? Do you want America to be like hated by God because America is not complying with Romans chapter one? I'm trying to bring America back to God so that God will again love America. Because I love America, I want God to love America. But God loves his law far more than he loves America. That's why I'm trying to bring America into compliance with God's law. You see what I'm saying? It's not like I created God's law, right? Bible is there. Bible has been there for thousands of years. I'm just pointing at the obvious. It is what it is. As President uh, Trump says, it is what it is, right? It's in the Bible. It is what it is. What can you say? It is what it is. I didn't create Romans chapter one. I didn't write Romans chapter one. It is what it is. It's there. I'm just pointing out that it's there. I'm just asking you to read it because it's there. It is what it is. Um, yeah. You know, as you know, uh, I'm trying to save your life. But there is a spiritual world that exists that is very real. There are angels and there are demons. There is magic. Harry's looking at me like there is magic. Of course, Harry, there's magic. Bible says there is magic. Um, you know, and so, um, yeah. You need to get with the program. You need to wake up and smell the coffee. Because thousand people are dying every day in America. That's 365,000 deaths per year at the current rate. In April, we had like over 5,000 people die per day. Right? I'm predicting that there will be over 10,000 people dying per day in the summer. Summer, you know, we still have a month. Let's see. I hope I will be wrong. But, you know, death rate is going up. And COVID cases are spreading everywhere. Uh, New Jersey, COVID cases are beginning to rise. Uh, Pennsylvania. You know, Ohio is in a serious problem now. Illinois had like 1,500 cases today. Uh, North, North Carolina had like 2,300 2, cases today. Texas had over 8,000 cases today. I mean, it's, it's a mess right now. It's a mess. Uh, so I, I, I still think that we can't have 10,000 deaths per day. Unfortunately, I wish that weren't true, but it is. It can happen. Um, yeah. I mean, we're looking at a tragic situation in America. I'm predicting that during flu season that is coming in a few weeks, uh, one million people or more will die per month. Especially because schools have opened up in certain states like Georgia and Indiana. It makes it possible for this to happen. Even in Virginia, many school districts are opening. Virginia 8 district, there are four public school districts because there are like four areas, right? You have the city of Alexandria, city of Falls Church, they all have their separate school districts. County of Arlington, that it has its own public school district and Fairfax County, it has its own public school district. So there are four public school districts. You know how hard I work to shut all of this down so that your children won't have to die. But unfortunately, here are, there's only one Kira Christian Kim. Yes, I do this show. And everybody around Virginia watches this show in all counties, all cities. In fact, a lot of people are watching this show all over America, all over the world, hundreds of countries, but not all of them are listening, right? Not everybody listens. Uh, I work more intensely with my county and my, my uh, Virginia's 8th district, uh, my school, Georgetown University, uh, to save lives. But it's hard for me to work actively with every city, every county in Virginia. I'm hoping that people watch this show and see my tweets and then do what they need to do to, to survive COVID-19. But, you know, some are doing it, some are not. You know, and so 
Unfortunately, many school districts in Virginia will open, which means during the flu season, it's gonna spread like wildfire. So yes, we, Virginia, the eighth district is doing the right thing by shutting down the schools. And District of Columbia Public School is shutting down. And I've worked, worked to push that as well. So I'm glad that's been achieved. But if you have other school districts that are opening up, then COVID still can spread through them. Uh, and it could enter our district, you know, because there is no border blocking out other districts. So we can have COVID-19 enter from like the Virginia 9th district, you know, we could have COVID-19 enter, you know, uh, from Maryland uh, via DC, you know, that's the problem is like, we may be doing the right thing, but if there are people who are not doing the right thing all around us, then COVID-19 will impact us, resulting in many deaths. So yes, as long as you keep your children inside, as long as you keep your children away from other children, and that's up to you now because I did my part, here at Christian Kim Independent Candidate for US Congress, did my part to shut the schools down so your children are no longer required to go to school, but you need to do your part uh, and make sure that um, your children don't play with other children. Right, because that defeats the purpose. I mean, it actually, it doesn't necessarily, because if you go to school, you meet a lot of people, right? So your one child may become exposed to hundreds of children, you know, in, in a given week. Uh, and your child may get become exposed to hundreds of, not, not hundreds, but, you know, like dozens of adults, right? So your child has higher chance of getting it, whereas if your child plays with just like one child, ch the chance he will get it is lower. Still, I say don't let him play with other children. Uh, just to, you know, being safe is better. I mean, don't regret it with, when your child dies, like in November. You know, all I'm saying is, Yes, it's hard. Yes, you know, your child wants to play with other kids, but this is a time that you gotta save your children's lives. It's COVID-19. It's killing over a thousand people in America in summertime. It's gonna kill far more in winter. So you need to get your children habited, you're habituated uh, to like playing alone with you. So you should spend time playing with your children. And your children can play with each other, obviously. You know, and if you have grandparents that at home, I'm encouraging you to bring your grandparents at home. They can play with their grandparents. Uh, I'm encouraging everybody to socialize according to the family unit. So it's father, mother, children. Uh, and I'm encouraging you to bring grandmother, grandfather in uh, on both sides if you can. Then you have that one social unit where everybody can socialize together. It's a safe zone, right? Uh, and if you're adults, Try to work at home. Negotiate with your companies to work at home. I know there are some jobs where you cannot work at home, like bus drivers, you know, people who work in grocery stores. Make sure you wear a mask, make sure you wear a glove. When you come home, the first thing you should do is take a shower, put all your clothing into the laundry, um, you know, like, you know, laundry machine and wash it. It's the first thing you should do. Wash it in very hot water. Make sure you take a shower and change your clothes, wash everything, even your underwear uh, in the washer before you hug your children, okay? You need to practice safety, right? If you're working at Giant, I, I shop at Giant. Uh, Giant has really good food, you know, um, like fried chicken and stuff, you know, baked chicken. And their food is good, you know? Um, <laughs> you know, I used to go to Popeye's to buy food, chicken, but now I just go to buy it at a Giant because you know, I mean, I think it's just as good, you know. I, that's how I feel. I may be wrong. I'm not, I'm not like an expert on fried chicken, but, I mean, it tastes really good. I mean, you know. Uh, so, uh, and it's much cheaper. So, um, yeah. So, so you know, um, but, you know, but I know, you know, I, you know, I appreciate all the people who work at Giant, you know, because if we weren't for them, you know, we can't have all this food. And they're risking getting COVID because there are all these shoppers coming in every day. It's a pretty dangerous place to work in. But, you know, wear your mask, wear your gloves. When you come home, wash all your clothing. Put them into washer. 
turn it on with hot water and go straight to shower, take your shower before you hug anybody. Do not touch anybody before you take your shower. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, you have to be careful, right? Uh, you, people who are careful will end up saving their children's life. Obviously, it's not 100% foolproof. Uh, nothing is. But if you do what I encourage you to do, obviously, you're free to do what you want. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just encouraging you to do it. You can do what you want. You're a free man. You're not a slave. Do what you want. But if you do what I encourage you to do, chance that you will live is far longer than if you don't do what I encourage you to do. COVID-19 is a horrible thing. It is, a, you know, spiritually speaking, it's a fulfillment of Romans chapter 1 prophecy. You know, the wrath of God that is promised in Romans chapter 1. It's unfortunate, but it's happening. Uh, you know, wrath of God happens in history. You know, God is that way. God, God is kind of mean. God is, has anger management issues. God punishes. God sends his holy angels of death. That's what God does. I just read the Bible. God does it all the time. It's not like once in a while. God does it all the time. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, so be very careful. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so there, here are some photos uh, of me at the beach. Uh, I love the beach. Somewhere is so nice. Uh, and so these are photos from uh, Spain. Uh, Spain's beaches are my, my favorite beaches, you know? Um, yeah, and the women uh, underneath me, uh, you know, uh, we became friends, you know. Um, I'm a friendly person. Uh, and, you know, if they're like attractive, you know, I'm single, I'm not married. Uh, I hope that God will send me a good Christian woman to marry so we, uh, we can have a lot of children uh, and children will grow up to love the Lord. Uh, you know, you know, uh, but, you know, I trust in God, you know. I mean, there are things that God wants me to do, like running for U.S. Congress in Virginia State District, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I... I need to help expand the kingdom of Christ on earth, right? Uh, I'm running for U.S. Congress because I know that if we don't come into compliance with Romans chapter 1, you know, a lot of Americans will die. So I want to save Americans. I want to save America. So I know we need to do things to bring America in compliance with Romans chapter 1 because God is King of kings and Lord of lords, and he wants his laws kept. Uh, so whether you like it or not, you have to keep it. You have no choice. Because God is God. He's an absolute monarch. Kingdom of Christ is not a democracy. It's absolute monarchy. God doesn't negotiate. He gives you the law. You have to keep it. Um, yeah. And so I know this. So I'm trying to save lives of Americans. I want to save America as a nation by running for U.S. Congress so that I can work bipartisan to legalize LGBTQ. Uh, that's my first campaign promise, so that I could save American lives. From a spiritual angle, that's the most important thing we need to do to save American lives. Make sure our federal, state, and local laws illegalize homosexuality. That's priority number one. Because God's not gonna stop enforcing his law through his holy angels until we come into compliance. Uh, I know this, and obviously, because I'm a theologian, as you know, um, and the Bible is very clear. You can read the Bible for yourself. You don't have to have me or anybody tell you what the Bible is saying. You read the Bible for yourself, Holy Spirit will help you understand. So just read the Bible for yourself. Do not take people's human words. Human people, humans often go away from the Bible. That's why I say read Romans chapter 1 for yourself. It's self-explanatory. You don't have to have anybody explain it to you. It's clear. It's like literal. Um, but anyway, you know, I like beautiful women because God created beauty. So I talked to these uh, two beautiful women. Um, we became friends, you know, like, so we, we hung out together during the day on the beach. Um, you know, um, yeah, it was fun. I mean, she's really cute, isn't she? She's really nice. The other, the girl, um, her friend, uh, is beautiful blonde, but I, I, uh, yeah, she, uh, she's kind of sun tanning, uh, you know, she's kind of like her friend. So, uh, 
Yeah, but so that's why it's kind of hard to show you her face. But um, yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah, they're really nice. I mean, I had a lot of fun hanging out and, you know, talking and, you know, doing a lot of, you know, beach kind of things, you know. You're at the beach, you ride waves, you suntan, you know, beach kind of things, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and then, um, you know, I, I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I made a lot of friends. So, um, yeah, so that's another friend that I made, German. Uh, so those two women are German. She's German, the one that I'm sitting next to. Um, yeah, and then uh, the other girl that I'm kind of lying in on the sand with, sh she's Macedonian. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then the girl next to that, she's English. But yeah, I mean, I, I love Spain. You know, it brings like tourists from everywhere and people are really nice, you know? So, uh, <laughs> and you see, I kind of like really, really bad. <laughs> You know, uh, what do you think? Do I look good pet or not? Um, I love the beach, you know? Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, once I start working at Virginia Hospital Center, maybe, like, I get one of the fellow co-workers to go to the beach with me, you know? <laughs> you know? That'd be nice, you know? Uh, yeah, we'll see, you know? Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, unfortunately, we have uh, 1,369 deaths in the last 24 hours in America. It's, it's a tragic period in American history, but it's going to get far more tragic during the flu season. This is summertime, people. Folks, this is summer. We should not even have, be having any death. Like China right now, there's zero death. No one's dying in China. Everybody's working. Nobody's dying. There's no COVID. They don't even have cases in China. And look at us. We have over 1,369 deaths in 24 hours. We have over 50,000 cases. Now we are at 4,768,827. Is that for real? For God's sake. I mean, my heart bleeds for our country. Why do you think I'm running for US Congress? Do you think I like being a politician? Jeez, for God's sake, I, you know. I mean, I'm running for US Congress because I have to, to save your life because they are establishing Republicans and establishment Democrats. They're so corrupt. I need to go there and clean things up so I could save your life, save our nation. That's why I'm running for Congress. If I had my way, you know, there are thousands of things I'd rather do. Like, you know, as you know, I went to nursing school to be a nurse, you know, and I had no, I, no reason to become a politician. And then uh, I decided to become a politician after talking to, uh, Professor Lauren Spencer and taking her public health class. She used to be a nurse at a Wakefield High School here in Arlington, and she was a manager in the Arlington Department of Health. So after she told us and showed us how important it is to have uh, uh, create policies to help uh, people, I said, well, I, I need to run to help people. Um, as you know, uh, my campaign promise number three is I want to bring health equity and educational equity for uh, inner city public schools. You know, I teach um, fifth graders at Savoy Elementary School in uh, Washington, D.C. War Day. That's 100% African-American students, poorest neighborhood in D.C. I love those kids. You know, I love them like they're my own. Uh, and I know that, you know, it hurts me. You know, let me tell you a story, you know. Uh, I have students who cannot read the board because they can't afford glasses. They can't afford an eye exam. Um, some of them are not aware of how to get an eye exam or access the healthcare system that may exist for them. And I said to myself, you know, we have to change things. I mean, I'm not just looking at one student, there's like three or four students. And I'm like, these are smart students. I mean, you know, uh, we need to find a way to provide equity so that they could get their eye exam, uh, they could get glasses. Um, you know, how are you gonna drive without glasses, right? How are you gonna study without glasses, right? So we need to provide these glasses for these uh, students. And their eyes are getting worse and worse because they don't have glasses on. 
it's a bad situation. Um, you know, and the Savoy Elementary School, we, uh, we tried to provide dental services. So I was like at my kids every day to get them to sign the dental form, you know, from their parents. I called the parents to make sure they get, the, we provided access to free dental care. So I was like, you know, for weeks, I was getting, trying to get 100% of them to sign up. Because, you know, sometimes even though you have access to uh, a free dental care, sometimes students don't access it because maybe teachers are too lazy to get the form signed or encourage the students to sign the form. Sometimes parents are too lazy uh, or, or they forget or the children forget to bring the forms to their parents. So I'm like there on the phone trying to, to make sure everything is signed and brought back. Um, yeah, I have my, uh, you know, uh, uh, children's uh, parents' phone number on speed dial, you know. Uh, you know, I, I'm always contacting them, trying to get stuff done for their kids. And it's like, I'm like a second parent, you know. Uh, and, I, you know, I see myself as working together with their parents uh, for the kids' benefit. So, you know, they're stakeholders, they're, they're parents. Uh, and so I see myself as a team with them and the kids. So I talk to the kids, like their kids who can understand to persuade them they need to get these things signed, you know. Uh, so I make sure the children are part of the healthcare team, you know. Um, yeah, I, when I say healthcare team is whenever we're trying to get healthcare services to the children. But they, there still is lack of access as well. So uh, that's one of the, you know, so when Professor Lorraine Spencer was teaching us about upstream and downstream uh, impact, and her theory, and this is with public health nursing, is the greatest impact for healthcare can be done by U.S. congressmen. That's their theory, yeah. And I said, really? Well, then I'm gonna run for U.S. Congress because I wanna like make things better for all these African Americans and Hispanics uh, who are U.S. citizens, you know, who don't have access. So, um, you know, and Asians who are U.S. citizens because I know a lot of Koreans who don't have healthcare access, immigrants. Um, so I said, you know, I, and you know, they live in inner city, and I say, you know, and there are, you know, like Arlington has 100 different immigrants. Some of them need healthcare, you know? Um, so I said, you know, I, I'm just gonna run for US Congress. So I decided in November, 2019, after taking Professor Lauren Spencer's class to run for US Congress, and that's why I'm running. Um, you know, and then COVID-19 hit. My original number one promise used to be like, I want health equity and I want uh, educational equity. But after COVID-19 hit, God made me realize health equity is important, educational equity is important, but it's not as important as, as lives, right? I mean, I want to provide health care equity and education equity for my students at Savoy Elementary School in D.C. were dead, yes, but that's not important, as important as my students living to see like 18, to see 50, to see 100, you know what I'm saying? So from a spiritual angle, since COVID-19 is wrath of God fulfilled, uh, that is promised in Romans chapter one, it's a prophecy being fulfilled uh, from a spiritual angle, from a Christian angle, because Christians have written about this for 2000 years. It's not like I'm creating this from scratch. There are things written about the wrath of God for 2000 years of Christian history. That's why I'm just kind of following the 2000 years of tradition because obviously God's wrath had visited before nations and communities during the 2000 year period, like Black, Black Death that killed one third of the population. So there's a lot of things written on it for 2000 years. So I can say with 100% certainty from a spiritual angle, from a theological angle, from a Christian angle, that COVID-19 is wrath of God. Because there are 2000 years of stuff written on this. Yes, I'm a historian. I'm a professional historian. I did my PhD program at UCLA. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I've studied history. Uh, obviously, I can't read everything in 2,000 years, but I could read a lot of, you know, you know not, not even a lot, a lot, a lot. It's 2,000 years is a long time. But I could read all the important ones, you know. Uh, so I could conclusively say that COVID-19 is the wrath of God promised in Romans chapter 1 without a doubt. I have zero doubt. Uh, because there are 2,000 years of theology written on this, Romans chapter 1, and the wrath of God, and incidents when it occurred. Um, 
Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's why my ca first campaign promise became illegalizing LGBTQ. Because I know from a Christian angle, from 2,000 years of Christian history, Christian theology, uh, biblical interpretation, exegesis, expositional preaching, that this is what it is. Yeah. That's why my number one campaign promise from November became number three. And abortion, yes, it was an important issue for me. And obviously, I wanted to legalize it. But it was more like, you know, second campaign promise. And then I realized, I think God wants me to have that as my higher than equity. Because obviously, you know, this is, uh, you know, COVID-19 is wrath of God. Obviously, God hates homosexuality the most. But murder is murder. And you're murdering little babies when you have abortion. That's violation of Ten Commandments. So I, I came to realize, you know, I can't really make abortion my second priority. It has to be higher priority than health equity, you know? So in November, my priority was like health equity and education equity, and then illegalizing abortion was up there, obviously. But now I said, I, we have to reprioritize based on COVID-19 because virus, vir, virus dictate the timeline. Uh, as Dr. Fauci said, and I think that's applicable even in, in, in this sense. Um, yeah, because I don't want you to die. I don't want your children to die. Uh, and because this, from a Christian theological angle, based on 2,000 years of Christian theological writing, exposition of preaching, exegesis, that's what this is. Um, so the, the quickest way to save your life is not finding a vaccine. Quickest way to save your life is to comply, come into compliance with God's law. Uh, so that's my priority. Obviously, you know, um, you know, President Trump is not a theologian. He doesn't know 2,000 years of Christian theology. Uh, you know, he, he doesn't know what the church has done against homosexuals for 2,000 years. I do. Um, yeah, because they have to comply with God's law. Um, yeah, it's about saving lives, you know, saving lives of Christians, born-again Christians. So, um, yeah, but, you know, President Trump is a business. He's not a theologian. He doesn't know what happened, you know, in the past with homosexuality and the Christian church. He doesn't know any of that. Um, yeah, that's why, you know, if you don't know history, you repeat it, you know. You need to know history. But obviously, you can't know everything. We're finite human beings. We're not God. We're not omniscient. We're not all-knowing. Um, so there's only so much we could do. President Trump is an excellent businessman, and I consider President Trump as an excellent president. I, I, I believe that President Trump is the best president the United States had, of America had in its history. I consider President Trump far greater than Lincoln, far greater than uh, George Washington. Um, yeah, I, I, and I teach this stuff. You know, I taught uh, US history to, uh, uh, Wyatt Middle School in Emporia, uh, in Greenville County, Virginia. Uh, yeah, that's what I taught. Sixth grade social studies, U.S. history, you know? And so uh, I know my stuff. I'm a licensed social study teacher for elementary, middle school, and high school. And I taught at university level, at Brown University and uh, UCLA. So I know what I'm talking about. Um, and I can say conclusively, President Trump, you know, at least looking at the, through the criteria uh, that I have, is the best president the United States ever has ever had. Um, so I respect him. And as long as he opposes LGBTQ, I will vote for him and, and encourage you to vote for him on November 3rd, 2020. But he, everything President Trump has done uh, he's done out of love for America. You cannot doubt that. Um, sometimes he makes mistakes. He's human. You know, I'm not, you know, like, I don't believe in the liberal media. They just hate President Trump because they're, like, worshiping Satan. You know, they're, they support LGBTQ rights. You know, they support abortion. They openly support it on TV, like CNN. I don't believe in liberal media. So I don't believe in anything that liberal media says about Trump. 
you know, the more they attack President Trump, the more I want to support President Trump. I'm sure over 80% of Americans feel the same way. Um, and that's why President Trump beat Hillary Clinton. You know, like President Trump is like a nobody in politics. Hillary Clinton's been there forever. But President Trump beat Hillary Clinton because Americans do not trust the media, liberal media. They do not deserve our trust. Uh, President Trump is absolutely right. Liberal media is fake news. You know, they're trying to like make you into slaves by having a national mandate on masks. It's absolutely ridiculous. You're not slaves. You know, if, if people tell you you should wear a mask, if you want to wear it, you wear it. You don't have to wear your mask in your home. You don't have to wear a mask when you're walking around the street by yourself. Obviously, if you're going to go shopping and they want you to wear a mask, it's private property, you should wear a mask. Because, you know, we believe in the right of private property, right? So you've got to respect other people's private property. You don't have to go in there, but if you're going to go in there, you've got to respect the property, private property, right? So if somebody who owns a private property wants you to wear a mask, either don't go in there or wear a mask. It's just about respecting private property. Um, yeah, but I mean, there should never be a national mandate on masks. There should never be a mask mandate for Virginia. One thing I have to say I, I like about Ralph Nordham, maybe because it's his Virginian, he did not issue a, ma a statewide mandate on mask. You know, you know, that's the right thing to do. Um, I think that's his own thing. I mean, I've been talking about it, but he's never talked about mandating a mask. So, um, I can't really say he's been influenced by what I've been saying. I think Governor Northam himself doesn't like masks, you know? So that's one thing that I would say is a credit to um, Governor Northam. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of things about Governor Northam I don't like. Uh, you know, his support, support for abortion is absolutely wrong because it's murder. Support for marijuana is wrong uh, because like we don't need Virginians doped up. Um, yeah, but I mean, you know, uh, but this mask mandate thing, he's doing the right thing. You do not force Virginians to wear masks. That's just absolutely wrong. I mean, obviously recommended. I mean, I wear masks all the time I'm outside. So don't get me wrong. I think you should wear a mask. But I don't think you should be made into a slave and forced to wear a mask 24-7. Because that's what slavery is. And I, so I don't want America to make you into slaves. I don't want Virginia to make you into slaves. So that's why I, I oppose a mask mandate in any form. Like if you want to go, go into a building and the building owner says wear a mask, you should wear a mask. Um, yeah. But you know, things are bad in America. Death rate is going up in the summertime. It's just tragic. Um, California is number one now with 525,275 cases. Deaths are at 9,665. So it's going up and up and up. Um, it's going to accelerate, you know, uh, the, the rate of death in the states that have a lot of cases. And because the baseline is so high, when the flu season comes, you're going to see like a, a massacre by COVID-19. It's going to be tragic. I would hate to be in California, Florida, or Texas during, uh, you know, flu season. Um, yeah. Um, although, you know, they say, you know, uh, there may not be so much of a problem through flu season for California, Florida, and Texas because it's like kind of a hot zone. Uh, I don't know. We have to see and see, see what's going to happen. I mean, obviously, I think Midwest states should be seriously worried because you know how they get. They're like 12 feet of snow, like 12 inches of snow or six feet of snow in some areas. Yeah, they're going to be clobbered. A lot of people are going to die. Uh, and you see Ohio, they have 1,000 cases already. So probably, you know, during flu season, the most number of deaths will probably come from the Midwest and northern states like Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, Connecticut, New York. Uh, yeah, probably like the northern states will see the most deaths in flu season. Um, Illinois, Michigan. Uh, but... Um, but you never know. I mean, because Florida and California and uh, Texas are high. Um, 
So during flu season, you know, they may have exponential growth as well. Um, because I think like, you know, most of these states like California, you have a Northern, Northern California where, you know, you can have flu spread. Um, and even in Florida and Texas, you know, because people travel and flu, flu is like a virus, influenza virus, it spreads people to people. So, uh, you know, no state is immune during the flu season. Uh, but this time around, it's going to spread, you know, there's going to be flu spreading, but COVID-19 is spreading regardless of season. And I was correct to have predicted that. Um, yeah, so Florida, you have uh, 7,402 people dying. Texas, you have 465,456 cases, 7,261 deaths. Um, so the percentage of death is low because a lot of cases have happened in the last several weeks, but death has just kind of started um, recently. And that's why the lady's, um, she's really cute, you know? She's like looking at her, you know? Um, you know, my two friends, the friend that uh, was sitting up there with her uh, cool sunglasses, she's really cute. No wonder I sat next to them, <laughs> you know? Um, because, you know, I was at, Cambridge University researching uh, Hebrew Jewish and early Christian studies. And I just opted to just, you know, it was summertime. I'm like, ah, man, I'm doing research, 12 hours of research per day on Jewish studies. I love Jewish studies research, but hey, I mean, this is summer. So I said, heck it, you know? Um, and I got a ticket. It was only like 200 bucks round trip. And then flew over to Mallorca. Uh, and I found an apartment, you know, like a hotel for less than like 50 bucks per night. Uh, that included like breakfast and dinner, you know. I was like, man, this is like a good place. Um, so I went, you know, and um, yeah, I had a great time. But I went by myself because it was like a last minute thing, you know. All my friends were like back home because it was summertime or they're like on a long, you know, vacation with their family or whatever. And I'm like researching Jewish studies in the library. It's pretty empty in there, you know, just like diehard researchers, you know, like me. And I'm like, man, I'm just going to take off for Spain. That's what I did. I'm so glad I did because I met like so many wonderful people there. You see at Mallorca. Uh, I, I was going to go to Mallorca this summer. You know, I, you know, it's kind of hard while you're campaigning, but uh, I could have taken off for like a week. My plan, original plan was like, go to, I had a, a ticket, plane ticket in March for, to Latvia and to Poland to see my friends. And then I, in the summer, uh, um, I, uh, I was going to go to Poland and, uh, Spain. Um, you know, I'm kind of serious about, you know, bachelor in Poland. So I have all these beautiful single ladies that I've dated in bachelor in Poland. You know, I, I shared that with you yesterday. So I was going to go and kind of see some of them again and then start narrowing it down, you know, to see if any one of them could end up being my wife. So that's why I was going to go back, uh, and, in March, I was originally going to go back in December, March, and June. And then I started running for U.S. Congress of Virginia's 8th District in November. So I was campaigning really hard in December. So I ended up not going to uh, Poland because I was campaigning. It was like Christmas time. I was going to spend Christmas you know, w with my mom and dad and then fly out, uh, and my sisters, and then fly out um, and then spend like New Year's uh, with my Polish friends, you know, different. Well, you know, I have all these dates that I have to see, see again uh, or we'll want to see again. But um, yeah. Uh, but anyway, you know, um, yeah. But anyway, uh, so, <laughs> you know, look at all the things I had to, I had to give up to, to help you. I'm running for U.S. Congress just to say, save you and to bring health equity. Originally, I wanted to do that for health equity's sake. But, you know, now, you know, I'm kind of running, um, focusing on saving your lives because, what good is health equity if you're dead, right? 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 Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, they're beautiful women, beautiful Germans. I love Germans. Beautiful Germans uh, in Mallorca. Oh, gosh. Yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah. Um, New York, uh, uh, most of the deaths uh, are from the first peak, March to May. So their death... Uh, as we know, is at 32,725. It's my prediction that far more than that will die in winter. I'm sure New York will break 100,000 without any problem. 
uh, you know, this flu season. Georgia um, is now number five. They replaced uh, New Jersey. New Jersey was there, remember? No, New Jersey is dropped out of the map. Obviously, you know, when the flu season comes back, um, you know, New Jersey will be back up in top. New York will be ranked number one again, and then New Jersey will be number two. Probably both of them with over 100,000 deaths. You know, I think, you know, that's something we could expect uh, during the flu season. I mean, New Jersey's already seen cases go up. And it's summertime. Can you imagine what will happen in the flu season? New Jersey's going to get clobbered. Um, Georgia uh, has 3,921 deaths. I mean, they're, death, they're rising. Uh, so it's, it's a worry. You know, I march for your life. Not only your life, but quality of your life. Yeah, quality of life is important. Um, um, do you want this woman as a president? My gosh. COVID-19? I don't know what to do. You know, COVID-19? I don't know what to do. Yeah, that's Hillary Clinton. Thank God Almighty, Hillary did not win. 2016, can I get a five on that? My gosh, can you imagine what America would have been like had Hillary Clinton won in 2016? I'm speaking to you Democrats right now. Because all of us Republicans uh, who voted for Donald Trump know what America would have been like had Hillary Clinton become president. We already know. So I'm speaking to you Democrats out there. Aren't you happy that Hillary did not win? Yeah, you Democrats out there. You car carrying members of AFL CIO. Can you imagine United Auto Workers? What America would have been like, like had we had Hillary Clinton as president in COVID 19 era? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah, that's what we would have had. Hillary Clinton with, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah. So thank God Almighty that we have President Trump. Jeez, thank you, Lord. I mean, you kind of know that God still has soft spot for us because he let President Trump win. I mean, if he hated America, he would have let Hillary Clinton win. But I think because of homosexuality, God's angry enough at America that I think God may give us Joe Biden, which is nightmare come true because Joe Biden is nothing more than a male version of Hillary Clinton. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, you know, let's remember Hillary Clinton and Benghazi victims. We shall not forget. Uh, can you imagine what would happen if this negligent individual had become president? I mean, all of you would have been Benghazi victims. You know what I'm saying? Can I get a five on that? Can I get a five? Yeah. So thank God Almighty for God's grace. Hillary Clinton is not the president of the United States of America. Give me a five. Um, can you imagine what Hillary would have done when we had uh, defund police? Defund police! Defund police! Defund police. You know what Hillary Clinton would have done? She would have arrested police officers. Yeah, that's what she would have done. She would have like deputized all the defund police members in Antifa and got them to citizen arrest police officers, put them in jail. That's what Hillary would have done. Do you really want a male version of Hillary to be president? Miss, Mr. Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden himself? For God's sake, look at Joe Biden. He's like, oh, I want to be just like you, Hillary. I want to be just like you, Hillary. I want to be close to you, Hillary. I want to be just like you. Are you really considering voting for that man? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Now, uh, you know, um, Joe Biden tries. So, you know, we give him, you know, some points for trying. But look at him. Does he look natural on that mask? I mean, he's not even wearing his mask, right? He's supposed to, on the bottom picture right there in the corner, he's supposed to be covering his mouth and nose. Look, he's like covering his chin. 
Show. Dude, you got to cover your nose and mouth, not your, not your chin. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous, you know. And look at uh, the picture above that. Joe is looking, Mr. Biden himself, Joe is looking at his mask. I'm like, what the hey? What the hey, Joe? What the hey? Why are you looking at that mask? I mean, geez, look at that. I mean, my gosh. Oh, I don't believe in liberal media which supports Joe Biden. I do not believe in the liberal media who says Joe Biden would be better president. Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. Yeah. Um, yeah, I said, no way, Jose. Um, okay, let's go to the picture above that. Does that look like Joe Biden is having problem taking off his mask? He's like being strangled in his own mask. You know, and I could not help myself but put a picture of an empty bra there. It, doesn't that look like Joe Biden's mask kind of looks like a bra? <laughs> you know, or like half a bra? I don't know. I mean, is it me or is it me? Or is it me? I mean, <laughs> I don't think it's me. I mean, look, just look at the, the empty bra above Joe Biden and look at his, you know, bra looking mask that he's trying to take off there. Don't you think there's a result, resemblance? Hillary Clinton says, I don't know, I don't know. But you know, you know Joe Biden's mask <laughs> looks like that bra above his head, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, you know, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, some people wear bra really well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just want to remind Joe where bra actually goes, you know? So. There's a photo of a woman in a bra. I don't know. You gotta teach Joe Biden so many things. I don't know how what kind of president he's gonna be. Yeah, I'm being somewhat facetious about this, but still, in all seriousness, you don't need a Mr. Hillary Clinton in the White House. If Joe Biden becomes president, it's nightmare. It is an absolute nightmare for the United States of America. I mean, I cannot put it any other way. Because just think about, and I'm talking to you Democrats right now, think about what America would have become had Hillary been president now. Just think about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I rest my case. And Joe Biden is like Mr. Hillary Clinton. We don't need a Mr. Hillary Clinton. I, I don't know. I mean, do you think we need a Mr. Hillary Clinton? Just look at him bumbling with his mask. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, some people say he's a nice guy. I don't know. I always see him like yelling at labor members, like workers, labor members. He's always yelling at them when I see him on news. Last time I saw him in news, he was like fighting with a labor member about gun rights. I'm like, man, I mean, I've never seen Joe fight with like white color workers before. I, mean, I think Joe Biden like just bullies work working class people, you know, labor union members. I've never seen Joe Biden like take on like a white color guy, like a billionaire. I don't know, I think he has, he's like a, <laughs> I, I don't think he has a healthy respect of uh, working class. You know, and that's disturbing to me because I, you know, President Trump has respect for the working class. You know that, and, you know, and that's why a lot of labor members voted for President Trump in 2016, because he respects working class Americans, you know. Um, but you know, I, I don't know, maybe Joe Biden does respect working class labor union members, you know, but whenever I see TV, he's always yelling at, uh, you know, labor union members, you know, but when I see President Trump, he's only always yelling at these like wealthy billionaire type liberal, you know, like, you know, you know, that guy, um, in CNN, uh, who's that guy, the Rockefeller guy, like he's on every night. He's like a billionaire, right? He's a Rockefeller fortune. Um, and I, see, I see President Trump yelling at people like that. So, you know, I, I never see President Trump yelling at like working class people. Because he has a healthy respect for the working class. Uh, and so, uh, I, you know, and he's, he respects the police officers. They're working class, right? Um, so, you know, I like President Trump, you know? Uh, but 
Joe Biden. I don't know. I get the I don't get the impression that he respects working class labor union members, and that's just deeply disturbing for me. You know, I, as you know, um, you know, I was elected by uh, Local Six of American Federation of Teachers, Washington uh, uh, D.C. Teachers, uh, AFT, American Federation of Teachers, uh, Local Six. Uh, so I was elected to be the national delegate. Uh, to the National Convention of American Federation of Teachers. Um, and so, um, you know, so I have a, you know, I, 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 I fight for labor, I fight for working class, working class people's rights uh, for their benefits, their job. Uh, and so, you know, I, I just wish President, uh, Vice President Biden had more respect for working class Americans, you know. Um, you know, I, I see President Trump and you know, I see a guy who respects working class people. You know, because President Trump is a workaholic. You know, he just works, 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 you know. Um, and that's why I think he has a, a healthy respect of working class Americans. Because, you know, imagine how hard President Trump had to work to be a billionaire, you know. Um, he's a self-made billionaire, right? He wasn't a billionaire when he graduated from University of Pennsylvania. He made himself into a billionaire. So he worked his butt off do that. So he, he respects hard work. Uh, and that's why he respects working class Americans, you know, and he genuinely loves America, you know, um, he wants to make America great again. It's not just a slogan. He actually wants to do that. That's why, you know, I respect President Trump, you know, because he and I see eye to eye on that. You know, we both want to make America great, great again. And we both do not believe in the liberal media. And I'm sure many Democrats right now uh, during COVID-19 are refusing to believe, believe in the liberal me media any anymore because, you know, the more you see them, the more you see that they're like filled with lies, you know, they're not truthful. Um, so, um, and you know, many Democrats are beginning to see that it's just wrong to kill little babies through abortion. No, seriously, you know, a lot of Democrats, they, they believe that abortion is wrong. And then now they're realizing that, you know, they need to, to put their vote where their mouth is, you know? If they really believe that abortion is murder, then they're not, they're not gonna vote for Democrat. <clears throat> so I think that's the right thing to do. So I applaud you, those of you who have decided to vote against Democrats because of abortion issue, you're doing the right thing. You're saving the lives of little babies. Excuse me. Um, you're doing the right thing. So uh, as long as President Trump opposes LGBTQ rights, uh, I would encourage you to vote for him uh, on uh, November 3rd, 2020. Uh, we do not need another Hillary Clinton uh, or anyone who resembles Hillary Clinton in any shape or form. That's who Joe Biden is. We don't need that. You know, COVID-19, they say it's forever. And, you know, President Trump has been very good about handling COVID-19. He has his little idiosyncrasies, you know, like anybody, you know, but his heart is in the right place. He, he's trying to do what he thinks will help Americans in America, you know? And I know like a lot of liberal media, you know, they, they just hate President Trump. It's just, it's not right because you can see, whether you're Democrat or Republican, you can see President Trump, his heart is in the right place. Um, yes, he makes mistakes, but geez, who doesn't make mistakes? All of us make mistakes. If CNN treated us, if liberal progressive treated us like, like the way uh, liberal media treats uh, President Trump every time President Trump makes a mistake, this would be one country which would feel like a hell. You know what I'm saying? A country where there's no grace, there's no second chances, you know, just liberal progressive out to get you. Uh, that's not the America that you want. You don't want liberal progressives to come into power because they're going to take everything away from you. You may not want any guns, but you probably want right to have a gun to defend yourself, right? Liberal progressives are gonna take you right away. Liberal progressives are going to take you right away to uh, fly your Confederate flag in the state of Virginia. 
You have the right to fly your Confederate flag. It's your heritage. You are not who you are without the Confederate past. So if you destroy Confederate statues and flags, then you're nobody. Your, your past is gone. You know? Why should anybody be allowed to destroy your past? You know, and that's what liberal progressives want. They want to destroy your past by banning Confederate flag. And as you know, here at Christian Kim, independent candidate for U.S. Congress, that's who I am. I encourage every Virginian to fly the Confederate flag proudly, if not outside, inside your home, <clears throat> and teach your children about the great Southern tradition and cultures, the beauty of Confederate past. Um, yeah, I would encourage you, all of you parents in Virginia to encourage your children. And if any Christian pastor tells you not to uh, fly a Confederate flag, stop going to his church. Stop giving money to his organization. Because, as you know, New Testament supports slavery. Uh, New Testament does not consider slavery a sin. And St. Paul tells runaway slave, when he means to go back to his slave master. So if anybody tells you to not fly Confederate flag because of slavery, they're standing against the New Testament. So they're not true servants of Jesus Christ. A true servant of Jesus Christ will not tell you not to fly Confederate flag. Because they know, they read the New Testament, and the New Testament says slavery is not sin. St. Paul himself told newly converted slave to go and serve his slave master. So even if you're converted to Christianity, you shouldn't automatically get emancipation. That's the position of the New Testament. So if there's any Christian pastor who tells you not to fly a Confederate flag, you have the New Testament for yourself. You can read it on your own. You shouldn't go to his church. You shouldn't give donation to his organization because he's standing against the word of God himself. You may not like slavery, but you can never call it sin because New Testament doesn't call slavery sin. In fact, New Testament defends the institution of slavery. So you cannot stand against your testament and call yourself a true Christian. So whatever your personal opinions are about slavery, if you're going to bring Bible into it, then the only thing you can say is that Bible supports slavery, both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. So fly your Confederate flag with confidence and pride because New Testament is on your side. And it's against the side of people who want to destroy Confederate statues and Confederate flags. New Testament stands with slavery, not against slavery. Um, yes, Christian life is a hard life. Because sometimes you may find things in the Bible that are offensive to you, but you still have to submit to it because it's God's word. That's why the Bible says not everybody will go to heaven. Because it's hard to submit to God's word. Because some things you're going to find offensive. Uh, and uh, that's why the Bible says, gospel is a stumbling block to the Jews, an offense to the Gentiles. Right? So if you think New Testament support of slavery is offensive, then you're just like being a Gentile who will go to hell. Because New Testament supports slavery. So, um, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you have things you like, you have things you hate. God has things he likes, God has things he hates. God likes slavery. God doesn't hate slavery. Uh, and it's emphasized again and again in New Testament or Testament. So, yeah, you can like what you want. But you, if you want to bring, drag God into it, drag Bible into it, then let's be honest here. Let's take the literal words of New Testament regarding slavery, right? Are you going to put words into God's mouth now? Yeah. So, uh, so fly your Confederate flag with uh, confidence and pride in Virginia. I encourage every Virginian to fly Confederate flag, black, white, Korean, Hispanic, Latino, a uh, hundred different ethnic groups in uh, Virginia's 8th District. I encourage you to fly the Confederate flag because this is part of Virginian history. It's a, it's a very beautiful history that Virginia has. And Confederate Army <clears throat> had some of the greatest uh, Christians who love Jesus, who are examples of Christian faith, like General Robert E. Lee, 
General uh, Stonewall Jackson, these are great Christians uh, whose faith we should try to emulate. Um, and so, um, you know, um, yeah, don't vote for Joe Biden because he's not, he's going to make this into a dictatorship. You know, he's not going to let you fly Confederate flag. He's going to destroy every Confederate statue. He's going to try to change the military bases, names that have Confederate general names. That's what Joe Biden would do. He's going to make America into one big dictatorship. Do you want to be free or do you want to be a slave? of Joe Biden. Do you really want to be a slave of Joe Biden? Um, yeah. So vote against Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. No to Joe. No to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Yeah. Ah, this is going to be a fun election. I can't wait. <laughs> we have like what? Hundred more days of this. Yes, thank God Almighty. This is like the best year in my life. This is like election year with some idiot guy running for the Democrat office named Joe Biden. We're gonna have so much fun, so much fun talking about Joe Biden until November 3rd. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have fun, yeah. So uh, Mindy and Mandy, they, they are excited that we're going to have so much fun. Yeah, so it's going to be a great uh, 100 years. Yes, we're going to have 1,000 people die per day from COVID, unfortunately. And it's going to increase to like 10,000 people per day. But I'm going to keep you entertained. And I'm going to keep you informed so you survive COVID-19. But hey, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun with Joe. We're going to have a lot of fun with Joe. I'm so glad that Joe is running uh, for the Democratic ticket because, you know, he invites us into his world uh, to laugh at him. So, yeah, let's all laugh at Joe together. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to, Joe. Say no to Joe. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. <laughs> we're going to have so much fun, you know. Oh my gosh, yeah. I encourage you to, to, to create, you know, little, you know, little social media bits about Joe and spread it all, all over America and the world because Joe invites us to laugh at him. So, you know, why not? Why not? You know, <laughs> why not laugh at him? So say no to Joe, say no to Joe, say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Oh, we're going to have a fun time. So, um, yeah. So this is going to be the best year of your life, at least from, like, laughter, say. Because you're going to do a lot of laughing at Joe. I invite you to laugh at Joe with me. Let's laugh together at Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. Say no to Joe. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for checking in uh, today. It's a daily show. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And oh, yeah, we have how many days countdown to election day, November 3rd? You and I are going to have a lot of fun. You and I are going to have a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank God for Joe because, like, we. He invites us into his world to laugh at him. And we have to laugh. I mean, this COVID-19 is filled with so much sadness. Uh, you know, one good thing that Joe gives us is that invitation to laugh at him, you know? <laughs> yeah, so uh, uh, it's a <laughs> there are good things in life. You know, every, every sadness has a joy. You can always find morsels of happiness in any tragedy. So, yeah, so, so uh, I'll help you uh, stay sane and happy uh, throughout all this tragedy. And obviously, most importantly, I'll give you information that you need to survive COVID-19 for you and your children. And obviously, I fight for you. Um, so um, you're very lucky because I'm fighting for you. I'm providing you information. I'm giving you entertainment. Oh my gosh, this is like, one show that has it all, <laughs> you know. So, uh, yes, I'll see you uh, tomorrow. 
uh, I hope that you'll be well um, and that uh, your children will be well too. Uh, so, um, so I bid you uh, adieu for now and see you tomorrow. Bye.